Hello everyone, this is Richard. In this video, I share how I optimize my graphics, OBS, Shotcut, and AVI DMUX settings to create videos for Starfield on YouTube. My advice applies to anyone who records gaming videos. There are five steps. One, benchmarking the new PC to guide gameplay settings decisions. Two, configuring Starfield to produce the desired gameplay experience. Three, configuring OBS to capture the desired raw audio and video material. Four, configuring Shotcut to create the desired video content for YouTube. And five, when creating shorts, using AVI DMUX to transform regular videos. This is personalized and something of a dark art. People have different opinions about how to accomplish these tasks. My goal is to share my configuration in the hope someone else finds it useful, or at least as a starting point. Computer stats and settings are in the description below. Let's start with benchmarking and setting expectations. I recommend starting with something like the Superposition Benchmark from Unigen. This will give you an idea of the raw processing power that your GPU can provide. It doesn't make any sense to try to run Starfield, for example, at 4K Ultra settings if your GPU can't provide a smooth and enjoyable experience while watching a benchmark such as Superposition. Superposition provides live statistics in a small font in the upper right side of the screen. When the test is done, you'll get a results screen. Here are my results for a 4K optimized run. Next, I recommend adding Cap Frame X to your toolbox. This tool is a perfect replacement for MSI Afterburner. I use Cap Frame X to gather a ton of data about how my CPU, GPU, and other computer components are performing. Here we can see CapFrameX providing real-time statistics in the upper left-hand corner of the Superposition benchmark. The best part of these statistics is that it's not just live, they're retained for future analysis. I'll discuss this when I compare different options for running Starfield. Before getting into Starfield, I'd like to talk about two settings I changed on the NVIDIA control panel. First, I set the max frame rate to 141 FPS. My monitor has a 144 Hz refresh rate, so I decided to go with the recommendation of about 3 FPS lower than the refresh rate. And second, I turned vertical sync on. Now we can finally talk about running Starfield. My goal is to run Starfield at the highest possible settings in 4K at no lower than 60 FPS with smooth frame times at or below 16 to 17 milliseconds. Ideally, I want my 1% lows to not go below 60 FPS either. I'm going to try three configurations, and for all of them, I do the following. I reset graphics to default. I set the graphics preset from custom to ultra. I make sure that I'm using a borderless window with 3840 by 2160 or 4K. I set the NVIDIA reflex low latency from off to on plus boost. And I set film grain intensity from 1.00 to 0.75. The first setting will be called 4K native. In addition to the previous settings, I set VSync from off to on, I set upscaling from FSR3 to off, and I also turn frame generation off. I run these tests on the planet Nisoy in the Olympus system because it has just stunning graphics and seemed like it would be a good way to see how well the GPU was performing. Here are 10 seconds on Nisoy. After I show you each individual video, I will compare them side by side and then show some performance graphs. Next, we'll look at DLSS at 4K. First, VSync was unavailable with DLSS. I set upscaling from FSR3 to DLSS. The upscaling quality preset was set to quality, and I turned frame generation from off to on. Here are 10 seconds on to soy with the DLSS 4K settings. DLSS is NVIDIA's own upscaling technology. Last, we'll look at FSR3 4K. In addition to the settings common to all three configurations, VSync is off to on, upscaling FSR3 is obviously on, and I turn frame generation from off to on. Here are 10 seconds on the soy using FSR3. This is AMD's upscaling technology. Now let's look at all three side by side. As we watch these, they all look pretty good, I have to say, as far as gameplay goes. I think when I'm playing the game, I wouldn't really notice any real difference. There doesn't seem to be any stuttering. 
the quality of the image is good. Uh, playing the game, it felt smooth, and uh, I actually had to do a little bit of work to make sure that I was capturing as good a picture as I saw on my monitor uh, using OBS, and we'll talk about how I did that in a moment. Now you can see that the, the uh, CapFrame X stats just disappeared. What's happening is CapFrame X is now writing data to a file that I'm able to check afterwards. And that's what I'm gonna show next in the graphs that compare the performance. Let's see what the graphs have to say. The blue bars in this graph show average FPS. And FSR3 is the clear winner with nearly 80. DLSS is just about 56. And native 4K is about 40. I'm also interested in the 1% lows. That is the orange bar, the second bar, and it is a little less than 63 for FSR3, about 42 for DLSS, and about 31 and a half for native 4K. So FSR3 is the clear winner according to this graph. Here's another way to look at this data. The top bar is FSR3, the middle or blue bar is DLSS, and the bottom green bar is native 4K. These are FPS over time. And consistently, you can see that FSR3 had a superior performance. Now let's look at frame times. Frame times measure the amount of time that passes between frames that are rendered in game. So to have a smooth gaming experience, you want frame times to all be about the same, and you want the time to be low. And here we can see the bottom figure, the one in orange, that is for FSR3. Compare that, for example, to the top line in green, that is for native 4K. Not only are those times much higher, but there are significant spikes. And those spikes essentially equate to stutter in the game. Here's our final cap frame X graph. This shows time differences between two consecutive frame time values. And once again, FSR3 is the winner. You can see that almost 90% of frames are less than two milliseconds difference. You have another chunk that are less than four milliseconds and a very small amount which are higher. Contrast that with DLSS and then native 4K where it's clear that you'll be getting more gaps in terms of the number of milliseconds between frames. To summarize then, to run FSR3 4K, we will reset graphics to default. We will set the graphics preset from custom to ultra. We'll make sure we're using a borderless window with 3840 by 2160. We'll set NVIDIA Reflex low latency from off to on plus boost. We'll use a film grain intensity of 0.75. We'll make sure VSync is turned on. Upscaling FSR3 will be on and frame generation will also be on. Now let's look at OBS settings. This is for recording and not for streaming. I used to record my videos using ShareX and it's still a great program but I find that OBS just gives you more flexibility as far as how to configure it and how to capture data. For recording format, I use MKV. You could also use fragmented MP4. I use the Remux option, which I will show later in the video. For video encoder, I use the NVIDIA NVENC HEVC setting to take advantage of my NVIDIA onboard processing, which can handle that. For audio, I use FFmpeg AAC. I set three audio tracks, one, two, and three. Under rate control, I do a constant bit rate, and that bit rate I use is 80,000 kilobits per second. For my preset, I do P7 slowest or best quality. For tuning, I use ultra low latency. Under multipass mode, I use two passes at quarter resolution. I use the main 10 as the profile. For look ahead, I have that off. I enable psycho visual tuning, GPU of zero, and max B frames of two. Now let's look at the audio, video, and advanced settings. Under audio, I have default as the desktop audio. And for the mic auxiliary audio, I choose my microphone, which is the Razer headset. For video settings, I use the base canvas resolution of 3840 by 2160. The output scaled resolution, same. Common FPS value of 60. And under advanced settings, I use Direct 3D 11 as the video renderer. For color format, NV12, 8-bit 420, two planes. And for recording, I choose to automatically remux to MP4. That works well with my MKV format. Here are my sources settings. I think the only interesting one here is the display capture capture method. 
I set as DXGI desktop duplication. Everything else is pretty standard. Before talking about video editing, I want to mention that I use a program called Change Screen Resolution to switch between 144 megahertz for gaming and 60 megahertz for editing videos in Shotcut. Using the settings I have for OBS, I'm able to import videos into Shotcut without going into any kind of intermediary format. I do make proxies, however, to manipulate the video. Now let's talk about video editing. I edit using the Shotcut program. This is not a tutorial on Shotcut. I am simply going to share the settings I use for export. Starting with the format or container, I use MP4 with a resolution of 3840 by 2160, aspect ratio of 16 by 9, and a frame rate of 60 frames per second. Next is the codec, and I am trying to optimize for use on YouTube. I use the AV1 NVENC codec. I use quality-based variable bitrate with a quality of 75% or CQ of 13, GOP 30 frames, 2B frames, and zero codec threads. For audio, I don't use anything special. I use two-channel stereo, 48 kilohertz sample rate, AAC codec, and bitrate of 384K at a constant bitrate. Here are my settings in the other tab, and these are all standard. I didn't make any changes to these. To estimate the quality of the video that I provide to YouTube compared to the one that YouTube provides to me, I like to use a program called VMAF GUI. This is an interface to the VMAF algorithm that Netflix developed to assess video quality. Here I'm comparing two versions of one of the no ship landing videos that I recorded. One is the original output from Shotcut, and the other is the one I downloaded from YouTube. Here we can see a very high VMAF score of over 98, despite the fact that the original file was 1.5 gigs and the file downloaded from YouTube was 605 megs. Our last step, and this is actually an optional step, is to add borders if we want to create a YouTube short. YouTube shorts are generally square or in the vertical format. So when I create a short, I add a black border to the top and bottom of my 16 by nine format video in order to make it appear square. Here are the settings I use for video output. And using an active filter, I add a border of 840 pixels to the top and bottom of the video. And that is how I make gaming videos. If you like this content, please feel free to like or subscribe. I am interested in your thoughts. Please leave a comment and I will see you in the Starfield.